I have a whole pile of backpacking pillows here and we're going to talk about which one might be best for you on your through hike. Well, hello there. I am here with a bunch of backpacking pillows and as I'm getting ready for my hike in June, I thought it would be fun to go through all the different pillow options, or not all of them, a lot of them. I think I've got five different ones here and tell you what I like and what some of the features are so that you can decide if you want to take a pillow, what kind of pillow you might want to take hiking with you. So there are a few different types of pillows that you can use when you're backpacking or camping. You have the air-filled pillows and the, that have a kind of a nylon um, cover. They try to make it soft as possible, but there's no bladder inside this. This is, you blow it up and this is the pillow as you get it. So there are basically three types of camping pillows. You have the pillows that come with some kind of a fiber fill inside and they compress only about as much as say a synthetic sleeping bag would compress because the fill takes up space and so you compress it as much as possible but it's still going to be fairly big. Then you have pillows that like this one that have an air core inside them so a soft outer side that may be nylon maybe fleece like this one and then on the inside it opens up and there is a bladder inside for air. Now one of the problems with this is that the bladder can get a leak and your pillow starts just kind of seeping out air. That actually happened to me on the trail with this pillow after several times of trying to repair this and basically what you do to repair it is to take the bladder out, uh, put a little bit of air in it and then put it under water to see where it's bubbling up and find where the hole is and then you can patch it. This one I had a leak just right here on the seam and I put a piece of tape on it but it actually worked pretty well. Uh, for a few months before it just got to the point where I found I was putting air in the pillow two or three times a night and it was more than I wanted to deal with. So at that point then I went ahead and filled this pillow with uh, some fiber fill and just sealed it up. But the third type of pillow is an air pillow that's more lightweight. It doesn't have an outer and an inner part. It's just all made out of some kind of a nylon or plasticky type fabric. Uh, they try to make it as soft as possible with treatments on the outside of the fabric But it's all one piece and you just blow it up and go and these tend to be probably the most lightweight pillows Although to my mind, they're not the most comfortable So what did I use on the AT? When I first started training for the AT last year I picked up an inexpensive pillow at an REI garage sale I made this cocoon ultralight air core pillow and I did what I just explained with the bladder it had a hole in it so they sold it for six dollars which is a great bargain and it retails at about 33 34 dollars so I thought I got a, a great deal for six bucks and a little bit of a repair that didn't take me more than probably 10 minutes to do and it's got nice padding on this side with a nylon cover nice fleece on this side so it was an extremely comfortable pillow but it weighed in at 6.2 ounces so then I went and I bought the Cocoon Hyperlight Air Core Pillow versus the Ultralight. It's a little bit smaller, as you can see. Uh, the fabric is that nylon, um, almost like a parachute cloth. It's very lightweight. And this pillow weighs in at 2.7 ounces. This one, when it's deflated like this, makes a great, just a little covering. So if you're cold and you want to like, just lay something on your hips to keep you warm, it's almost like a little blanket. And so I did that on a few cold nights and I really liked it, but I didn't want to carry the extra weight of the whole length of the Appalachian Trail. So I left this one at home, but it is a very good pillow if you don't mind the 6.2 ounces, if you um, uh, are okay with the inflatable with the inside um, bladder, which to me I think is fine. I don't have any problem with that design. Um, and it's a great little pillow, very, very comfortable and would make also a great pillow just for car camping if that was your style. So I ended up taking this one on my hike and leaving this one at home. This pillow, as I said, is the one that spent the most time with me, the most miles on the AT. And as it started to break down, I did, when I was up in Maine, actually stop at my cousin's house and do the repair on the inside. But then I was blowing it up multiple times a night. So I said, okay, I'm not gonna do that anymore. They had some fiber fill handy. So I just went ahead and stuffed this one full of the fiber fill sealed up the outside and it made a very nice pillow for uh, the last several weeks that I was on the trail. Now once I put the fiber fill in it that brought the weight up to 5.6 ounces so it was almost as heavy as the other pillow that I had been using but it was extremely comfortable when I laid down to sleep 
didn't have any trouble. Great for snuggling with at night. So it worked out to be just fine. And I would take it again, but I'm going to try to shave as much weight as I can before I do this next section that I've got to complete. Um, it is only 225 miles, but still I'm going to work on getting my weight down to, I'm hoping, below 15 pounds. So I probably, am, I'm not going to take this pillow at this weight. I'm going to do something a little bit lighter. So with that in mind, I picked up this Big Agnes uh, Q-Core pillow, which is, the, as I mentioned, the, just the one uh, layer of fabric kind of plasticized fabric and this is a great you can see it's a big pillow uh, if you want a pillow that is just like your pillow at home then this is a good option it blows up to about three four inches thick and it really does feel like a regular pretty much a regular pillow however <laughs> I think I would need to make a pillowcase uh, like this one that I had put on the other pillow to go over this both partly to keep it clean and also just to add a little bit of that softness on my face because I find that this fabric does feel a little bit uncomfortable to me when I'm sleeping. So this is a lovely pillow. Uh, it's not cheap. It retails for about $50 and um, there's you know, nothing really I can say bad about it that it's just not ideal for my style. So if you're looking for a good size pillow, one that's nice and thick that feels a lot like your pillow at home, then this might be one that you want to try. Another option that you may have tried uh, that a lot of people do is to take a stuff sack and just throw their clothes in there. And I did that particularly when I was having trouble with this pillow. I did that a few times. And also if I needed something to go between my knees because either my hips or my knees were aching or I just, I'm a side sleeper and I toss and turn a lot. So I find that it's nice to have a pillow that I can either kind of snuggle or put between my knees at night. So a few weeks ago, I was on the Granite Gear website and I noticed that they have this stuff sack pillow. And I know that z -Packs and some other manufacturers make something similar. And basically you just put your clothes down inside it. Pull the drawstring and you've got a pillow. And it's got one nylon side and one fleece side. Uh, one thing I do like about this is that the bottom is square. So it's got a little bit more shape to it than just a regular stuff sack would have. And the size of it is relatively small. It's fairly narrow. But the last time I was out backpacking, I tried this and I tossed and turned a bit with this just as my only pillow. I felt like it was a little too small. It just didn't really give me a lot of support. And so I felt like it would be much better as a pillow to kind of go between my knees, as I mentioned, uh, if I had a better pillow here at my head. Now one big advantage of this Granite Gear pillow sack is that it only weighs 1.5 ounces. So if you're looking for a pillow and you're a truly ultralight backpacker, this would be a great option for you. Now the decision that I need to make is that if I'm going to take this and use it as my stuff sack for my clothes and then also as, my, as a knee pillow at night, um, I typically put my clothes in a Sea to Summit Ultrasil um, backpack. A travel day pack basically that I can use when I go into town and that worked great when I was doing the Appalachian Trail uh, week after week because when I wanted to go in and do my shopping do my resupply I had something that I could carry very easily now I could certainly do that with this but it's not the same as having a backpack uh, the ultra cell pack uh, weighs 2.5 ounces so if I switch this out I will shave an ounce out of my pack but I won't have that backpack option anymore. And I do think that for my upcoming hike, which is gonna be three weeks, that's okay. I won't be doing as many town trips. It's much, you know, walking around in town, shopping, that sort of thing. So I probably will end up taking this uh, instead just because it's a little bit more comfortable than trying to stick that backpack between my knees. And then finally, I was drooling over these at REI when I saw them and this is actually a pillow with down on the top and it's hard to believe that there is a backpacking pillow that is down um, but there is yay <laughs> this is the Sea to Summit Eros down pillow and it's got a down layer it's not super thick but it is a down layer that you can put your face on uh, or if you like this is a fleecy side and it's got this I don't know if you can see that it's called a pillow lock system and if you're using a Sea to Summit pad and this pillow they have some type of a velcro system that you can get that actually will attach it to your sleeping pad so that it doesn't slide around um, that is an issue for me but at the same time as I mentioned I'm a side sleeper and I roll around a lot so I tend to just hold my pillow and move it with me as I roll around but this one is relatively small 
Uh, I haven't haven't tried my pillowcase, but I can do that right now. Well, my pillowcase is a little big, but I could make a pillowcase to go over it because this um, coating on the downside is pretty slick, and so I would want something over it, but I could even just put a t-shirt over it at night and that would make a nice pillowcase, but it's a good size, I think, for me uh, for sleeping. And you can see this one has also got a good couple inches of thickness here, so it's really an extremely comfortable pillow. Uh, the down adds a little bit of just extra loft and comfort, and I'm really, really liking it. Now, another feature of this pillow is that it has this um, dual valve that allows you to blow the air into it, and then you can actually let out a little bit of air at a time to adjust it or put a little bit of air back in and you just push the little tab in the middle and that releases some of the air, but when you want to deflate it at night or in the morning, you open that up and all the air comes out. Big Agnes also has an interesting valve system where you blow it up and you could use a pump sack as well if you have the Big Agnes sleeping pad. Uh, I think you might be able to use the same pump sack to um, blow it up, but this has a little tab on the end here that you just push down in the middle here and that lets out just a very small amount of air instead of deflating the whole pillow. And so if you blow it up too hard or if you wake up in the middle of the night and it's too stiff, then you can just let a little bit of air out to make it more comfortable or blow it back up if you need to. So that's a nice feature as well. Now, unlike the other pillows, the cocoon pillows, where you could pull the bladder out and repair it, you can't do that with this one. There's no zipper anywhere. So unfortunately, even though this is a $60 pillow, if you get a hole in it or if the bladder goes bad, Pretty much going to be out of luck. So that's something I'll have to think about, but I do love, love, love the downside and the softness of that, and the weight is wonderful. This one only weighs 2.5 ounces, so compared to uh, the fix that I had to do on my former favorite pillow, I'm going to be saving about three ounces out of my pack. So if I make this change and then also switch to this, that's four ounces, which may not sound like a lot, but every ounce adds up and I only need to squeeze out a pound, a pound and a half. So that would have me well on my way for lightening my load for my next trip. So I'd love to hear from you about what kind of pillow you like. Do you like something like the Big Agnes Q Core that's almost like home? Do you like a cozy, soft and fluffy, fleecy type pillow? Do you like some kind of a fiber filled pillow? Would you like to try a down pillow? Which I think is just such an awesome idea and I'm thrilled about it. Or do you go old school, lightweight and use a pillow sack? I'd love to hear from you in terms of what kind of pillow you'd like as well as any other gear reviews that you'd like to see me do. I appreciate you being here and if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that button down below and click the bell too so you'll be notified whenever I post new videos, which is usually on Friday afternoon. I'll look forward to seeing you here again soon. Happy hiking! Thank you.